Hey folks, Rob with Two Guys in a Ride, and today I'm at the Detroit Auto Show in downtown Detroit, and yeah, you know, this has propellers, and it's not really automotive, or is it? Well, we've got Colin here to give us a little bit more of an idea of what we're looking at and what this is all about. Hey Colin, how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Tell us, what are we looking at here? So in short, this is an eVTOL, so electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Takes off like a helicopter, flies like an airplane. Wow. Now, now, what is its purpose, though? I, I can see how it would convert to a, a, a flat wing to fly like an airplane and how it's kind of shaped right now to take off like a helicopter, but for what reason? So our special sauce, you know, there's a lot of helicopters, there's a lot of airplanes around. What we have, and if you look to your left and to the right here, we have two different pods, and that's kind of what makes us uh, who we are. So we have these pods that detach and reattach, to the aircraft with the little robot that's kind of chilling over there, charging up. And so what happens is, you imagine you have cargo or people in there that are geared up, ready to go for a flight. You have a fully charged battery in there. You get to drive right up, plug it right into your aircraft, go for your 100 mile flight or so. And then once that's done, comes to land. You don't have to worry about recharging or anything because your pod comes up or someone else's cargo pod gets detached. The fresh one comes on, plugs in, and you go off to where you got to go. Okay, so what we're looking at right in front of us is for passengers. So how many passengers can be in that? So I kind of, I like to call it a minivan. So you can sit, sit about six to eight people in there. Okay. You know? Now, and I'm looking at the photo above it then. So where can this fly? You, you're, and how far can it fly? Uh, it depends on batteries, just like any other electric car, about 100 miles or so, so you're not going to go across the country. So this whole thing is electric propulsion? Exactly. It's all fully electric. Okay. Um, you know, folks are just now adapting to <laughs> electric cars on the ground. Uh, electricity in the air propelling their aircraft. I mean, what's, what, is, what are some of the questions folks tend to ask you about? So we're going with electric aircraft, and honestly, it's following, following the trend. You know, there's a lot of government regulations getting away from com combustion-style engines, right? So okay. you can fight that as much as you want, but unfortunately, you do have to follow the market. So that's why we develop, we're developing a fully electric aircraft. Right? Okay, so then who flies it? So right now it's going to be autonomous. So, oh, gee. <laughs> and you, and a lot of people are afraid of that, but honestly, it's the safest thing. Are you going to any airline at all? Ninety-nine percent of the actual flight is what done by a computer. Right. You basically, tell it where to go, how fast you want to go, how high you want to go. Well, you have less That's garbage it. cans and oncoming cars up in the sky to worry about. Where the autonomous it's, driving on ground has it panned out as well. Yeah. But I imagine up in the air, you've, you've got a little bit more freedom. Yeah, there's a whole traffic management system kind of in the background that a lot of people don't think about that okay. you also have to develop as well. Like, you have cars, right? But now you need roads. Right, now right, you need right. stop signs. Now right. you need street lights. You need all those other things. Okay. Um, especially as air mobility, which is what we're going for, right. as that gains in popularity, as it already is. Right. right. We're, not, we're not the only electric aircraft here. Right. Um, as that gains more popularity, you have to have more regulations and, and more rules and things that tie you down. But that's kind of where we're out here now. We're trying to be one of the first people out here. Okay. So you were saying about, can we walk over and take a look at this one? Yeah, absolutely. So what is this pod, if you will? I mean, is that what you call so it? So this is our cargo pod. This is a cargo pod. Yeah, versus so that one's passenger. that attaches to the aircraft basically right under here? Yep, exactly. So it's prototype right now. Production is going to be a little bit different. So okay. you have this robot. It's kind of chilling on its legs right now in its parked position. Oh, okay. So the wheels and the platform are a robot. You would only be carrying. Yes. You would only be carrying around with you just the silver and black pod. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you come by later, we're probably going to do uh, live demos and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll we add that into the video then. Three thirty. Okay. Yeah. What happens is drops down. Uh, where it needs to go. So imagine this is, imagine the scaffolding is someone's shop, right? Okay. Someone has a pod, like a little container that they can bring to a shop. Or you load up, you can take your time loading up, and, and then you tell whoever dispatched that, hey, I have this pod ready to go. There's going to be a car or some other robot come to your shop, pick it up, drive to the airport. It's ready to go on the plane, comes up, and then goes really quick to wherever you need to go. So how does how does this unit get charged 
So our end goal is to have the batteries in these pots so that while it's being loaded, while everything is happening, these can be charged up. So it's a, it's a fresh charge with every flight. Exactly. So you have your batteries, you have your cargo all ready to go. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're right now, it's kind of like with internal combustion engine aircraft, I imagine. Every time they stop at an airport, they're refueling. Yeah, you refuel. Here, you're picking up a up. new fuel cell or, well, electric cell or electric mm -hmm. charge. Now, so this is just a robot that transports both of the pods, the passenger and the cargo? Yeah, but it also could be, um, there could also be extra batteries on here. So while it's driving, it can charge up the pod. How about that? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. An endless. So you're not stuck that you know charging up your pod and your aircraft's ready to take off you it's all managed time wise and everything exactly as far just as like any other company logistics like there's there's help there's batteries that exist there's airplanes right. that exist helicopters that exist cars that exist but it's how you can efficiently employ all those things at once to be most to uh Pretty much be the most efficient and fast as possible. Who do you hope that this will be marketed to and be adopted by? You're talking about cargo and passengers. Yeah, so, so initially we're actually going for cargo, which is why okay. kind of what we're focusing on here. Right. Because um, it's easier to set up, um, it's easier to get something certified to fly a box than it is a human yes. being. Yes. No. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what we're gearing for. So are you looking for to sell this uh, type of technology and sell your product to large carriers like UPS or FedEx? Or are you looking for that, uh, Amazon and some of these other carriers? Or you are if you're talking about maybe 100 miles or so, you're looking for last mile type of delivery? Or not necessarily really last not, mile. Okay. Like I'd say second to last mile. I don't okay. know the right terminology okay. for that. Right, right. But you but you think. You have an Amazon warehouse that's 50 miles away. Right. Someone someone orders some napkins they want next day delivery. Well, they can instead of having to drive a truck that's stuck in traffic, wasting gas, idling, you can have these vertiports or anything. What we call it vertiports. You can have all of these stage anywhere you need. Load up, push a button. Hey, I need to go to this warehouse at this time. It automatically goes and flies. Okay. Wow. So you're talking about uh, like prototype or stuff. How how close are you to actually being up and running and selling your units to be adopted into the market? Yeah. So for cargo, we're trying to aim for around 2025, 2026. And that's just all regulations on your side that you yeah, got to jump honestly, the hoops? Honestly, that is okay. one of the biggest so you, things. So you feel you've got the technology there? Where it needs Just to be. Just about batteries. I mean, technology changes every day. You'd yeah. have to keep up. But your biggest hurdle now is mostly the regulations. On the technology side, it's yeah. batteries. But on everything else, it's regulations. Okay. And companies like Amazon, their drone services are dealing with it. Um, other companies that uh, um, I'm not going to put names to. Right. Uh, they are dealing with regulations as well because there's plenty of things for the um, for commercial aviation for your normal commercial aviation, general aviation. Right. But there's not really much for autonomous aviation like this. Okay. And what is your position with the company? What do you do? So with I it? am our prototype production lead. Oh, um, okay. Uh, this is actually a, a, the best way I can explain it. Um, I'm kind of the everything guy. I help everything from running shows to machining parts, designing parts, running parts around. Okay. Um, that's honestly everyone's job. Have you been to many shows or is this your first show or? First show with this company. I've, okay. I've worked other shows at other suppliers and okay. such. Okay. How, I know, I know media wise, it's just media day. So the actual show hasn't opened yet uh, for a couple more days, but uh, what do you, what's the feeling been so far? Oh, it's been absolutely amazing. So some background, we're obviously a startup. We're a very small company okay. based out of Detroit city. And we've pretty much been on stealth mode, oh. but I think that's kind of working in our favor because now we're at this, we're at the Detroit Auto Show with the full size aircraft, propeller spinning, lights going. To see nothing to an actual aircraft has a really huge impact. How long really has amazing. all of this been in development? So this specific aircraft's about two years two and a half years or so okay from this exact concept and there's been um, the company's been around for about uh five six years um, okay and, and that's there's, quite a leap of product yeah. for what you've done if you've only been around five or six years 
this is pretty amazing to see yeah, so all of this in just a short amount of time. And I know it's taken a lot of manpower, a lot of engineering prowess, uh, a lot of smart folks like yourself yeah. behind this. Wow. Yeah, so we have actually had smaller prototypes here right on the atrium. Okay. In previous, at the last auto show, we had a couple here. But now this is kind of our, our big hurrah, a big, a big uh, event for us. Gotcha. Really happy. Now, can we walk under this and Absolutely. take a look at it and show me how then, so the robot would deliver the pod. Yep, so under, imagine you're following this black so line. So right along right the here. black line here. Yep. And then you at some point. Come out, there'll be sensors on the ground and everything. Oh, gee. And then all I have is just, it's, all you have is these basically pins that come up, twist, you're locked in, whatever electronics <laughs> are automatically plugged in. Really? It seems crazy, but you look at a container ship, they do thousands yeah. and thousands right. of them continuously. Right. So obviously it's a little different for the air, but if a, if a big ship can do that, why can't an airplane do it? Well, you know, I mean, we're, it, it's kind of a... Uh... Uh, right now, I mean, the past few days, I've been listening to uh, the, t the news and they're talking about a possible rail strike. What could something like this do to help reinforce all the containers and, and freight that moves on rail? Because one of the things I've found living in the Midwest is the enormous expense of getting rails from the coast now, or excuse me, containers from the coast inland, be just the cost. Yeah. And the rails are so backed up. How cool would it be if something like this could supplant picking up some of that freight along the freight lines, the coast, and flying them, jumping, yeah. skipping airport to airport? So we've actually toyed something similar, not specific to rail, but you got to imagine there's a lot of freight. There's yes. a lot of logistics that go between Detroit and Windsor. Okay. And there's only a handful of bridges, right? There's a tunnel, right. just a few bridges. And you got more and more what cars if you have and trucks an every aircraft, day. Like this, this would be perfect for it. Granted, it's like it, it won't go into full transition, but imagine you can have something fully autonomous that just goes 20 miles or 10 miles or right. whatever from one point to another point. Just kind of boxes and cargo pods go back and forth, back and forth right. all day. Right. You don't have to have truck drivers sitting. You don't have to pave tolls. You don't have to have truck drivers sitting, wasting gas. You just have to have the, well, and two, you don't really need airports per se. You could have landing pads. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. So like, like a hospital has for emergency helicopter landing pad, you could have a, several landing pads over 10 acres instead of having 5,000 acre yeah. airport. Yeah, you don't have to, and you can, unlo you can unload just like any other aircraft. You don't have to detach the pod or anything. So say you come and land, as long as you have some place you can plug in real quick, Right. you can charge up and just just like any other box truck or aircraft, you can just unload what you have to do, load it back in. Oh, how about that? Push a button and things off where it's gotta go. Wow. So uh, tell me where folks can find out more information about this. I there fly we go, ASX. iflyasx.com. Oh yeah. That's pretty cool, pretty catchy. Cool uh -huh. thing, you had it on the back of your shirt there. Yeah, Um. new website should be up, uh, we're running a Basically, a f new fundraising campaign right now, so okay. we're looking for support from anybody and everybody. Well, I got to tell you, this is a really cool concept. Uh, I spent a career in logistics, so I get this. I understand yeah. what you're talking about. That's why I had the whole thing about the containers getting in in the middle country. It's very expensive, uh, but this is this could be a huge game changer, folks. This is cutting edge technology, uh, and you've seen it here first. I'll tell you. You know, five, ten years from now, these things will be ubiquitous and all over the place. And uh, Colin's going to be sitting back on the beach somewhere, retired, <laughs> saying, I told you so. That's the plan. <laughs> all right, Colin, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and telling us about this supremely cool concept. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rob. Yep, you bet.